Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today we are looking at the Castle Arts Gold 120 pencil set. So Castle Art pencils have been out for quite a while now, the uh, standard Castle Art soft touch pencils that is. This is a, a newer release from them, the Gold Collection, and where the Castle Art soft touch pencils were wax based, these are predominantly oil based, so they should work a little bit differently in performance and lay down differently on the page. So let's have a look at the gold pencils, the packaging, things like that. We'll compare them as well to the Castle Art Soft Touch and see if there's any real difference between them and uh, the colours and things like that. So this is a tin that the 120 comes in, just a standard metal tin on the back. It says these 120 gold standard coloured pencils have silky smooth, velvety soft leads. These exquisite gold pencils show reliability, durability and consistency every time you get the creative impulse. So oil based, non-toxic, soft touch finish with quality wood casing. So we will check on that. We will see how my sharpener deals with it because usually you can tell when you're sharpening um, you know, not very good quality wood, you can tell because it really grates the sharpener and it's not easy to do. So we will see. Let's open up the box. So on the underside of the lid, we've got all of the 120 colours here. And any more new information? I don't think so. So it'd be interesting to know whether these colours are the same as the soft touch set. So I might have to do like a side by side colour comparison and see what's what. As far as I know, they are, for the most part, different colours, but we will see. So the great thing about Castle Art pencils is they always come with a lot of literature and it's a really nice quality touch to have this in a coloured pencil set. So we've got a gorgeous glossy book here all about this gold standard ed edition of pencils. It's telling us exactly what is on the barrel of the pencil. Then we've got the actual lead inside, the core of the pencil. It says that it is brake resistant and it says the features of these pencils are long life, smear proof application, waterproof capability, high level of light fastness. That's interesting. I'd like to see the, the testing on that. Acid free composition, integrally bonded crayons. So they've been bonded to the, the wood case, less prone to breakage exceptional covering ability and ease of detailing so ease of detailing tells me these are going to be a harder lead which is what you usually expect with an oil-based pencil anyway so i'm just quickly skimming through this to see if there is anything more said about that light fastness and even you know with the well it says it's been bonded i can't really see anything on here that's showing that it's been bonded to the wood you know whether it's glue bonded or, or however they've done it so Let's keep going through. So this is a section on how to care for and sharpen your pencil. Holding your pencils, telling you how to hold them in order to get sort of different um, strokes and things like that. Then it's saying that they draw on all kinds of different surfaces, cartridge paper, logs, uh, sandpaper, eggshell. Eggshell would be interesting. <laughs> eggshell would be interesting to try. Let's see. So then we've got a little bit of colour theory. We've got a colour wheel and talking about colour harmony here, complementary, analogous nature. So if you're wanting to know a little bit more about colour harmony and colour theory and the colour wheel in general, I do have a video for that that really gets down to the nitty gritty and the basics of the colour wheel if you've ever been slightly confused and perplexed by it like I was. This is all about light and form, so showing how to do shadows and highlights and cast shadows. Then we've got pencil strokes. Then we've got layering. So how you can make 144 colours out of 12 pencils. There's another video that I've done that explains how to do that as well. Then we've got a little bit on blending. This is a really, really good beginner's guide. It's very in-depth. So this is talking about burnishing. This is about if you're wanting to be a colour pencil artist who does drawings. Creating the gold freeze. You can download templates from the following tutorials from the Castle Art website. So you've even got tutorials with free downloadable illustrations and line art that you can you can practice on and then we have the rest of the range so really really in depth but see exactly how elaborate it is but that's not it we're not finished with the literature so we've got a colour and product guide here let's have a look at this 
So this is showing you the Castle Art product range. They do paints, pencils, uh, what else do they do? Watercolour pencils, woodless pencils, uh, gouache paints, oil paints, acrylic paints, and even fabric paint. So loads of different products there for you to try. And I guess that this is the whole colour range. So underneath each swatch of colour, we've got a little key. And this is um, telling you which colours can be found in which products that Castle Arts do. So this uh, Primrose Yellow, for example, it has a red, a blue and a brown square underneath it, which means that you can find this colour in their coloured pencils and also in the watercolour pencils and also in the gold range. So you just, you know, look at that key. Then you've got the pastel tint pencils, which I don't have, but look absolutely lovely. We've got a little invitation to the Castle Club. Then we have another book here, a step-by-step -step guide to creating the Castle Gold Freeze. So that, they spoke about that in the first book. So again, we've got lots of swatches here. Um, this is just talking about the gold pencils again. Nothing about this light fastness. So I would like to know about that. Is there anything in here? Oh, this is this is a step-by-step -step guide. So we've already seen this. Yeah. I think this is just to go along with the downloads that you can get. All right, so I think we're finally getting to the pencils. <laughs> All right, so we've got a swatch card here, which is fantastic. It's printed on really thick card and it's also foldable so you can put it in whatever case you're going to keep these in it is quite a smooth stock though but it's not you know it's not too glossy to be able to color on then we have a lovely bit of vellum paper emblazoned with the castle arts logo in gold there really really nice packaging and presentation so far why did i say presentation presentation i'm a midlands girl um yeah really really nice packaging we finally finally get to the pencils these are clearly different to the original Castle Art soft touch pencils, which I have right next to me, because the soft touch have a black barrel with colour dipped ends, and these golds have a, a sort of midnight blue barrel with gold stripes across them and the gold name at the end as well. So I'll get all of the trays out and we can have a proper look at the colours. So I'm assuming three trays here. Yep. Oh, these look nice. These are kind of, they look a little bit pearlescent, these colours. Let's have a look at an individual pencil, first of all. So let's pick, for example, this one here. This is a blue. It's called the primary blue and it's 098. That's the colour number. Then on the back, we've got the gold name and the Castle Arts name. I'm going to bring this up to camera just to show you a little bit better. So Castle Arts and gold on that side, primary blue and the 98 number on that side. Then we've got the core, of course. It looks quite thick. I'm gonna to have to get my measuring device out. Let's check the core size. So it says 3.9 millimeter core. So almost a four mil, that's really good. And then for the actual barrel itself, we've got 7.7 .7 mil. Fancy little gadget there. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sharpen all of the pencils because that's what I always do first and foremost. And once I've sharpened them, I will be filling in the swatch chart. So a really good reason for me to do this on camera is for you to see if any of them break and what kind of trouble I have when I'm sharpening them. And at the end, when I finish sharpening them and we've um, done all the swatches, I'll come back, tell you about any breakages that I've had and we'll have a look at the color range and go from there. Okay, so before I carry on, one thing that I'm noticing is all of these very, very lovely, light, delicate tones. And um, you can see it here in the coral and apricot range. Just some gorgeous, very light peaches, really, really dusky sort of light pinks. And I really like that. I'm guessing that these colours are included in the pastel tint set. 
But um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that I really like these very light tints here that you don't get in an awful lot of colour pencil sets. So the, this is, it's really nice to see these delicate shades included. So I'll carry on. Okay, so now that I've completed one tray of colours, I just wanted to have a little check in and see what we think. So, as I said, some really, really beautiful, delicate colours here, especially these very light coral colours. This Venetian red is gorgeous. It reminds me of like an 80s orangey lipstick red. That's what it looks like. I really like that colour. Um, but I don't know why, and a lot of colour pencil sets do this, why do they end up putting these dark tones of colours over here with the browns? I often find that, that you'll get to the end of a colour pencil set and it will be all of a sudden loads of purples and pinks and you think, why are they all here? <laughs> it would have been better, I think, to have just popped them in here where, you know, where they're supposed to go, but who am I to say? So yeah, really like the colours so far. Let's move on to the second tray. <laughs> So I just wanted to pause it quickly to show you that we have had a little bit of wood breakage down here, but the core itself is still really, really sturdy within the pencil. It is not falling out. It's not at all wobbly. I'm trying to pull it out and I really can't. So even though we've had a little bit of a, a damage to the wood there, it's still really, really strong and I haven't had one breakage yet. So really pleased about that. Okay, second tray done. So I've no idea why we've got our greens over here and then a bunch more greens over here before the yellows. Make it make sense, I don't know. And also I don't know why the um, chart is in a certain order and the pencils are in a completely different order. Very strange. And it's kind of annoying to have to search for the colour that you're looking for because you're looking for a mulberry over here when actually it's at the end or you're looking for a green over here and actually it's at the start. So that's kind of annoying. But yeah, as for the colours, really impressed with the selection of purples that they've got on offer here. Um, I do like all of these sort of aqua tones as well. The mint green is a favourite. The Venetian blue here is a very 
um, unusual colour. It's kind of like a desaturated greyish purple. So really like that one, as well as the Venetian Blue Deep. Um, the Venetian Blue Deep, even though it shares the name with the Venetian Blue, is actually in a different colour family. It's still got that same level of desaturation, but it does seem to be a little bit different. It's much more of a slate, slate grey blue sort of colour. Um, so there's not as much purple in there, so it's a bit weird how they've named those. But yeah, very impressed with the purples. Um, blues, not so much at the moment. I'm hoping that as we go on, we'll get some deeper blues. But um, at the moment, yeah, really, really like the vibrancy of colours. I just can't understand the placement of them at all. <laughs> So here we are, all the colours are swatched out. I'm just looking at how far outside of the lines that I've gone in the last few colours. Um, yeah, look how lovely I started out. It's like when you first start a new book at school, isn't it? The first couple of pages are always super neat and tidy and then you get to the end and it's like doctor's prescription. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, a couple of notes on the colours. I thought that there would be more in the range of darker blues. There isn't. Really for dark blues, we've got the Indigo Light. Um, the ultramarine and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so I'm not very um, happy with the amount of dark blues that there are what I do love however is all of these really vintage tones that we've got in this set so I did mention at the start these light apricot colors and things but as we've gone on we've got some beautiful beautiful vintage tones the oyster the old rose the sepia light the almond some gorgeous gorgeous colors here i think i could make a really lovely palette you know with those colors with the venetian blues and some of these peaches and corals just really really nice colors and quite unusual like i said i did mention that before some of the colors in this set are quite unusual so as i said i don't know why we've got colors all over the shop why have we got an ultramarine light at the end i just do not know um we've got a couple of blacks here we have the Mars Black, which is a brown black. You won't be able to tell on camera, but it is very much like a very dark brown. Um, and then you've got the Ivory Black, which is clearly meant to be more cool toned, but it's still not a true black to my eye. It's not dark enough. It's not deep enough. Um, what else did I notice about these colours? Trying to think back. Um, yeah, I just think the the names of the colours can be a bit odd sometimes. Uh, this one is called blue grey and i can't see a hint of blue in that at all um yeah just a couple of you know outliers where i just think that's a bit odd now the graphite color is actually sort of metallic it's almost well it is it's like a graphite pencil has that slight sheen and shine to it and there's another one the green gold as well so i would say that the graphite and the green gold are your metallic pencils in this set whether that was intentional or not i don't know um lots and lots of browns i say lots of browns but we've got quite a good um variation in browns so we've got some reddish toned browns we've also got some cooler browns uh one that i really like is this permanent brown it's almost like a very very desaturated mahogany color so it's got a lot of red and purple in there but it's really desaturated so i like that um anything else of note I'm just trying to look and think because we've got colours, like I say, all over the place. Warm grey light is over here for some reason. Um, yeah, I think that's it. As I said, really pleased with the amount of purples and I love these gorgeous um, like pomegranate colours. 
gorgeous. But I think my favourite out of the whole lot are the vintage tones, the sepia light, the aubergine, um, and like I say, these Venetian ones. And I'm just repeating myself now, but you can see the colours for yourself. Now, obviously, I can't tell you what these are like to lay down yet because this is a very smooth stock, as I mentioned earlier. So I don't feel that I'm getting the proper experience out of lay down. They do go on lovely, but with it being so smooth, I can't really tell about pigment and things like that. As you can see, they're all really gorgeously pigmented colours. It's just hard to know how they're actually going to work when it comes to colouring and blending and things like that. So what we're going to do next is, well, I'm going to do some colouring with them. And I'm going to do that firstly on printer paper, because I always check on printer paper first when I'm reviewing pencils, because I think it's really important to know how they perform on the most basic of paper that you could be printing out your PDFs on and things like that. I'll also be doing a colour testing sheet, which you will have seen if you watched my last video. Let's see if I can pull it out for you here. So this one was the uh, Derwent Chroma Flow testing sheet. I'm going to be doing this with the gold castle arts so we'll see how they perform as well and that is also on some proper coloured pencil stock so we're going to give them a good test all round and I will also do that with the castle arts soft touch so that we can have a side by side comparison so yeah um I don't think there's anything more I can say about the colours let me just get on with the colouring P.S. No breakages. No breakages whatsoever. Did notice, however, that some of the browns were a lot more crumbly than the other colours in the set. But, you know, you can't moan for 120 pencils and not one breakage. Really, really good. And the wood felt fine in my electric sharpener. Quite often with cheap pencils, budget pencils, you will find that the electric sharpener really fights me um, trying to cut the wood of these pencils because it's so cheap and nasty. But these absolutely fine. So, yeah, really good. So sometimes when I've got a page I want to colour, I do like to plan it first digitally so I know where I'm going to put all of the different colours and I can keep it nice and cohesive. So that's what I've done here. I've taken the illustration that I'm going to be colouring, link in description, and I've loaded it into Procreate on my iPad. I've put the swatch chart from the pencils in the corner so I can take the colours that I want. Now they're not going to be the exact shades because it's digital, but it gives me a little bit of an idea on placement. So really handy.
Okay, so here's the finished colouring. Uh, as you can see, the colours are completely different and yeah, that's absolutely fine. I wanted it to have sort of a really sweet, cute sort of colour scheme and I think it has. As for how the pencils have laid down, keep in mind that this is very cheap, generic printer paper. It is not coloured pencil paper. And as I said before, I do like to test pencils on cheap basic paper first, just to see how they perform at the very, you know, the lowest conditions that they can that they can perform in and you know i think they've done well to say that we're on this kind of paper but you definitely get that feel like they are not going to do more than one or two layers you can see that there's little speckly areas that started to build up very very quickly the blending isn't what i would expect it to be i mean if i just grab the one that i did with the derwent chroma flow on the same kind of paper Hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean. We still do have some speckly texture on this, but the colours blended far easier um, and the pigments were also brighter as well. So I'm hoping that when we do our testing on the real coloured pencil paper, that we'll be able to sort of grab, grab onto those pigments and we will get better blending. But definitely on this paper, it was quite difficult to build up more than one or two layers, like I said. But it's given it a nice delicate look. It's not completely flat and smooth. It's got some texture to it, but I usually try and colour as flatly and smoothly as possible. So it's not, you know, my usual style. But that's all I can say for this kind of paper. Let's get on with the testing. Right, so here's our finished testing page. As you can see, the rainbow blend is lovely. All the colours melded together really, really nicely. It didn't take much effort at all to get them there. And uh, there's a few like speckly bits, which, you know, happened on the other paper as well. So I don't know whether I would say that these are a fantastic layering pencil, um, but I suppose they're not an artist quality pencil. So can we expect that kind of result from them. I don't think so. So layers, as you can see, we got all the way up to sort of six with a little bit of tooth showing through, seven if we really went and burnished it, but you're starting to get those speckles again around the six and seven. So I would say definitely five probably would be your maximum layers before, depending on what paper you're using. Obviously the paper is really, really important. This is a quite a textured colored pencil paper. So that's why you can see a lot of texture. So as for the blending, we've got the pencil only blend, which, you know, is OK. I wouldn't say it's perfect. They blended quite well, but not perfectly or seamlessly. Then the white pencil, very, very creamy and opaque on top of this uh, blend here. As you can see, it's completely bleached out the other two colours. Then we've got the blender pencil, which really didn't do anything at all. Uh, then the blending solution, which has dulled the colours down. It's really dulled the pigment and it hasn't really blended them either. Then we've got the alcohol marker, which seemed to have no effect whatsoever. So I would say with the Castle Art Gold, stick to the pencil only blend. Then we've got the mixing. So you can see it, we created a beautiful green with the yellow and the blue. A uh, bit of an orange with the red and the yellow, but with the red and the blue, very dirty sort of muddy purplish colour ish colour erasing so I noticed with these gold pencils and also with the soft touch pencils that the erasing was 
very smudgy and they erased quite well but it smudged the pigment across and I have tried a couple of different erasers so you know I don't know I don't know I would be very careful when you're erasing them then we have the smudging so I just put a, a quick finger over the top didn't use heavy pressure or anything like that just to see if they would smudge and they did smudge a little bit most pencils do to be honest and then we've got solubility which didn't move with water at all so I coloured in the top of this uh, raindrop and tried to put some water on there to drag it down and as you can see there's no movement there at all then we've got opacity and aside from the white the colours are very translucent which is what you would expect from an oil pencil anyway um, so opacity not great but that just tells you that they are more of a layering pencil than they are a um, you know bold pigment right off the bat so yeah make of that what you will I also did this test with the original Castle Art Soft Touch. So I'll move this across and pop the swatches there. Hopefully we can see both. Yep, <laughs> just about. Um, so you can see the differences between the two. So just looking at these, I hope you'll agree with me that the, the Castle Art Golds, especially with this rainbow blend, the blend was far easier to do than this one. And it did seem to blend more seamlessly than the original soft touch however the soft touch do seem to have the edge on the vibrancy of color i would say uh, maybe that is because they're wax based and generally that is what occurs with wax pencils they are more vibrant and we didn't really get much speckling on this which we did on the oil so clearly that's an, an oil problem or at least it is with this formulation with the layers we comfortably got to seven with no speckling at all then with the blending methods, very, very similar here, looking at the white pencil, the blender pencil, etc. Very similar results. I would say probably a bit better than the, than the Castle Art Gold, but the pencil only blend was lovely. So, I mean, it swings and roundabouts, really. Uh, it really does depend on what kind of pencil is, is your preference. So with the mixing, again, very similar results. And then the erasing, again, we had that smudging really really strange and then the smudge test was pretty comparable and the solubility interestingly with the castle art soft touch they did actually disintegrate with water a little bit so you can see the difference here we have nothing or next to nothing on this side and then you can really see that i've managed to drag quite a lot of that blue down into the bottom of the raindrop so yeah they are slightly water soluble they're not completely fixed so that is interesting to note then at the bottom, you've got your opacity test. I would have expected them to be a little bit more opaque, to be honest, with them being a wax-based pencil, but they are very comparable with the, um, the Castle Art Gold. So yeah, I'm gonna move that up a bit in case you can't see. But yeah, they are very comparable. And maybe that just means that there is more binder in these pencils than there is pigment. Uh, but yeah, you've got them there side by side, so you can have a look and make your own mind up. I think it really does just come down to what kind of colour pencil is your preference, whether it's wax or oil. Don't like about the Castle Art Gold that you do get this speckly texture once you start. I think it really does just come down to what kind of colour pencil is your preference, whether it's wax or oil. Um, and yeah, I, I don't like about the Castle Art Gold that you do get this speckly texture once you start to build up the layers. But I do like how they blend nicely let's just have a look at the color range for a second between the two so here are the original castle arts now you can see on these originals we've got a ton of yellows and ochres we've got quite a few reds and oranges but not you know not really that heavy on the orange side then we've got quite a lot of pinks and red violets a couple of purples not heavy on the purple we've got quite a lot of blues starting from this prussian blue right the way down through into the cobalt turquoise this turquoise colours and then loads of greens as well all different temperatures and shades of green into the really really dark ones so looking at the greys as well I've got quite a few greys not too many browns but you know not bad now looking at the gold 
you can immediately see that there are nowhere near as many blues as there were on the original. So if you are a blue heavy person <laughs> who likes using a lot of blues in your colouring, then this probably isn't going to be the ideal set for you. As you can see, the lightest blue that we've got is this cobalt turquoise, but it is still quite a bright saturated blue. So I would have looked for something a little bit lighter than that. Um, just looking in this, if we have a lighter blue, I'm actually missing a few because I gave them to the kids and they got lost. <laughs> the, the, the pencils, not the kids. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, definitely would have needed more blues. I think they've predominantly sort of focused on these really light lights and the really dark darks as well. But we are losing a little bit on the individual colours. The greens as well, there aren't that many greens really. Some of these blues are very, very similar to one another. I think the colour palette could have been balanced a bit better. For the greys, they are basically all warm grey. I am struggling really to see a cool grey on here. I mean, this one is called cool grey, but I think it's definitely on the browner side. So I would say that's a warmer grey. But I mean, it's like I said earlier, it swings and roundabouts. It's a balance of, of what kind of colours you use as to what palette you will want. But I mean, there's a lot of unusual colours in this set, which really is a plus for it, in my opinion. I mean, just look at all of these different sort of French looking greys, very... Um, reddish based and just beautiful vintage colours and then obviously you've got the really light peaches as well um so yeah it really does depend i would say if you can afford to get them both and if you are a castle art fan i would have both in my collection but if you haven't used castle art pencils before i would try and get yourself a really really small set because i don't think they do open stock get yourself a really small set and test them first because Obviously, they're not the best pencils I've ever used. They're not the worst by far, but I think it's going to be either you like them or you don't. So you really need to try them out for yourself. It's very difficult for me to explain exactly how they lay down and how they work um, on a video. But hopefully I've given you enough sort of demonstration to see what you think. I uh, think that might be it. <laughs> Do let me know if there are any questions that you have and I will endeavour to answer them. Um, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.